Offshore scams promise huge profits, for sending your money to their jurisdiction, and in most cases, the goal is to avoid, or lower taxes. But be skeptical of tax avoidance schemes, that could result in owing the government money in back taxes, interest, and penalties. Although offshore investing can seem lucrative, there are risks. Moving your money to another country poses problems if something goes wrong, and you won't necessarily be able to take your case to a civil court in Canada or the US. Hence, it may be impossible to recover your money. Offshore scams typically work like this. An upfront consultation fee is usually charged, as they listen to you on the phone, ask questions to appear interested, and then propose what they always recommend, an offshore company. But it's not always a scam. There are several circumstances where offshore companies are a useful tool in protecting assets, however this is often accomplished by setting up a trust as well. Offshore banking and trusts are not illegal, for you can invest in reliable sources such as the Bank of Montreal, Scotia, RBC and other reputable banking institutions. The CRA defines tax schemes as plans and arrangements that go against the Income Tax Act. They deceive taxpayers by promising to reduce the taxes they owe. Such schemes may promise large deductions or tax-free income. This is what makes offshore investing illegal, tax avoidance, tax evasion, and aggressive tax planning. Investing in reliable sources can be rewarding even when you have to account for the taxes payable, because the investment returns are considerably higher. Therefore, venturing offshore is a tricky involvement and caution is highly recommended before seeking this type of investment. Here is a banking example of what can happen, and this banking construct is not an isolated occurrence. A Canadian lawyer William Wise, formerly the owner of the Cornwall Royals, in Ontario, Canada, during the 1980s, sought to expand his horizons and decided to apply for a banking license, operating as the Millennium Bank. Upon successfully obtaining the license, the Millennium Bank was now a licensed bank in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and began its operations in 2000. Unfortunately, this did not turn out very well for unsuspecting victims. For William Wise was ultimately sentenced to almost 22 years in prison, by a California judge for his part in what was determined to be nothing more than a Ponzi scheme, defrauding more than 1,200 people out of $75 million. After three years as a fugitive, William Wise who once operated Millennium Bank in St. Vincent gave himself up to U.S. authorities. Wise was charged with running a Ponzi scheme that milked investors for millions, and was indicted on 12 counts of mail fraud, 3 counts of wire fraud, and 1 count each of money laundering and conspiracy to commit fraud. Wise was sentenced, after pleading guilty to the charges in September 2014. A statement issued by U.S. Justice Department officials said the scheme, which dated back to at least 1999, involved the sale of financial instruments known as Certificates of Deposit CDs. These CDs were issued by the Millennium Bank, United Trust of Switzerland and Sterling Bank and Trust. Interestingly, the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ralph E. Gonsalves said he revoked the bank's license in 2003 because of low capitalization and reckless management that left the bank unable to meet its obligations. But, in 2003 two letters of introduction were written to the bank, that were highly decorated and expensively framed with colored photos of the authors, who were prominent government and state officials, along with their grand signatures, that proudly hung in the public area of the bank as well as the bank's website, praising the bank and the St. Vincent offshore banking system. Such praises and statements appearing as recommendations, may well have given existing and proposed investors the comfort required to convince them to invest in the services of the bank. The actions by the two officials may have been the contributory factor to some of the investors' losses, particularly those who were comforted and convinced by what they read. The names of these officials were deliberately used by Millennium to attract investors, and there is no known evidence that they ever objected to this commercial display of their names. After appealing the decision of having the bank license revoked, it was reinstated as the government's auditor handling the bank had not been formally qualified. Hence, the bank's license was reinstated in 2004. Unfortunately, this did not stop the huge fraud against unsuspecting investors, as investors continued to gain comfort from what they were reading on the bank's website. The bank was being represented by William Wise to be a wholly owned subsidiary of United Trust of Switzerland, which was purportedly a cash-rich private financial services company in Switzerland. What investors were unaware of was that United Trust was previously a company that sold cardboard boxes and straw. 
It never operated as a financial institution, which was part of the overall scheme. The certificates of deposit were sold primarily out of offices established in Napa, California, along with William Wise, and offices in Raleigh, North Carolina, that promised purchasers a lucrative guaranteed rates of return, typically 8%, but sometimes in excess of over 16%. CD purchasers' funds were never used for overseas investments, alternatively they were primarily used to enrich Wise and his group, and to make interest payments to earlier CD investors, making the process a Ponzi scheme. Wise spent about $50 million personally, purchasing, among other things, a private plane and a luxury property in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. $7 million was spent for the purchase and upgrade of the St. Vincent property. More than $400,000 was spent to pay off the Raleigh residence. $12,000 per week was paid to his wife, Lynn Wise. $10,000 a month was spent on female companions. $40,000 per month was spent towards the interest owed for a private plane. $5,000 per month for updated flight plans for the private jet. $19,000 per month for clearing, landing fees, and maintenance costs for the jet. $90,000 for pilot training. $40,000 per month on jet fuel. $1 million for a fine wine collection. $1 million to repay a personal loan. $450,000 for three boats over $150,000 in jewelry. In conclusion, in his plea bargain agreement, Wise admitted to having caused the sale of more than $129.5 million worth of fraudulent CDs from 2004 to 2009. However, in addition to his sentence of 262 months in prison on various counts, U.S. District Court Judge Edward Chen also sentenced Wise to a three-year period of supervised release. Meanwhile, Chen also scheduled a hearing to determine a restitution amount, which was later assessed at $100 million. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, and be sure to share.